try to play Luchador Mexican Wrestling Dice. What we have here is a copy of the first edition. In that, you had your rule book. You got some score counters. You got two different types of cards. In the center, you have your playing board, which represents the wrestling ring, and you had your dice. Let's look at the cards quickly. On the two player side, you have a strength track that starts on 21 and goes down to zero. It's marked as KO on the cards for knockout. Um, and you've got this red area which starts on 14 um, and that is the pin zone. On the reverse of the card you have a four player side which is used for tag team matches. It starts slightly lower than 18, again goes down to zero, but the pin zone starts on 12 and below on that side. The other cards are your Luchador Superstar cards. In the original game you had six of these, uh, we're going to be adding a few extras into the new game. Um, each one of these cards has a luchador wrestler on it, uh, it has his name, and it has his signature moves, what they do, and how much damage they do. So how do you play the game? Well, at the start of each round, each player has four core wrestling dice. They are rolled simultaneously on the board. They must stay on the board. Anything that goes off the board is counted as going out through the ropes, it's out of the ring, and it doesn't count. Now on those dice, there are different results. You've got miss, you've got hit, you've got counters, you've got blocks, and you've got pins. So let's marry them up and see what they're going to do. Okay, so we've got two hits for red, we've got two hits for blue. We got a miss and a block, and we got two blocks over here. The miss is easy, it comes off the board first of all, it does nothing. Okay, so red's got a hit, but blue has got two blocks here, so he's going to block that hit. You put a block against the hit, that just cancels it out, that gets taken off the board. Now blue has a hit here, red has a counter attack, but if you put a counter against a hit, that's a block and a counter strike, so instead of taking it off the board, red claims that hit. He drags it back to his corner. What was a hit for blue is now a hit for red. Red has one more hit. Blue's going to block that with his second block. Again, that comes off the board. So at the end of that round, each player has scored one hit. One for blue, one for red. For each hit you score in a round, you then get to roll the hit dice. It has your basic moves on it, it has your backhand chops, forearm slams, you got chair smash, you got double slams, you got drop kicks. So for each hit you score, you can roll one of these. Now if one of the players had scored two or more hits in a round, let's say the red had scored two, he would have a choice. He could either roll one green hit dice for each hit, or for two hits, you can buy a roll on the big lucha dice. Now this is your signature moves that's printed on these cards. This is what we talked about before. So these guys can do big damage. You can do up to seven points of damage on one of these moves. But on this dice, there's a chance of failure, and there's even a chance of injury in which you could stun yourself. When you get stunned, basically for the next round, you lose one dice and can only fight with three dice. So that's your basic how to attack and how to hit. What we didn't talk about there was pins. Now I mentioned the pin zone on the scorecard. If you get to a point in the game where your opponent has been weakened down into the pin zone and you roll a pin result on this dice, you've got a choice. Each time you roll a pin, you can always re-roll that dice once. So if you want to try and get another hit or a block, you can do so. But if your opponent is in the pin zone, you can choose to set that dice to one side. You would then match up all the other dice. You would roll any hits that come out of that. But at the end of that round, the red player in this case would get a chance to make a pin attempt. To do that, he would roll the yellow pin dice. On that, you've got feel results, you've got pin results, you've got a stun result, which stuns your other player, as we just talked about. And you've got the Viva Luchador. If you roll that result, it just means you were in a position to pin your opponent, but you decided that you were just going to show off to the crowd instead. You get a point back for doing that. But if you roll a pin result on a yellow pin dice, 
That means that you've got your opponent down on the mat, his shoulders are touching the canvas and the referee's going to step in and he's going to give him a three count to try and break that pin. How we do that in the game is the player getting pinned gets his four wrestling dice and he has three rolls to get three saves. In the game we count a block or a counter as a save, so anything with the fists on it. Okay. So this is where, as a pinning player, you get the act out being the referee and you'll count and you go, one! You roll the first time. I've got nothing in that time, I've got a miss, a pin, two hits, so no saves. I'm under the two count. Two! Okay, and that result? I've got one save as a block, but I've got two hits and a pin, they don't count. So I've got, now down to my three count, I've got one more roll, and I still need to get two more saves, so let's see. Three! Ah, not just enough. I got two saves, but it's not enough to save the pin. I have been pinned, and I'm out of the game. That's the game over. If I'd managed to roll another save on that roll, I would have kicked out of the pin and broke his hold, so that would be the end of the round, but I would be free to start the next round. So that's basically it. That's Luchador Mexican Wrestling Dice. It's all very quick and easy. Um, it's a lot of fun with two players. It's even more fun with four players when you start playing tag teams and tagging in. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh